We have speed, speed do we? You're on. Wait, not yet. One second. What a special okay. outfit. Thank you. I wore it just for Dallas. Great. Okay, Radon, it's nice to see you again. The last time we, we seem always to be talking in hotel suites. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you were in Dallas for Choose Me. And uh, we talked about that, and we talked about American Flyers. Mm -hmm. You have been one busy young actress here of late. Yes, I hope it's terminal. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems to be, in your case, the ball keeps uh, rolling right along, thank goodness. And now you are a part of this magnificent film, The Color Purple. Mm -hmm. uh, the role that, that you play, uh, this is a woman who kind of looks up to one of the other characters in the movie, uh, the woman called Suge. Now, uh, have you in your own life ever been in a situation as a kid growing up where you looked up to somebody and said, oh, I want to grow up to be just like that? Yeah, I had a very strange um, person. Like I, I looked up to Goldie Hawn. <laughs> well, I don't know why I just laughed like that. I'm sure she wouldn't appreciate it. I knew I didn't look like her, so I didn't aspire to the looks, obviously. But I liked her sweetness, you know, and I and I thought her femininity was so um, was well kept, and yet she was a star, and she was able to be in films where she was with the guys, and she wasn't just, you know, a woman trying to be a guy. She was a woman who was funny and sweet and actually very sexy, and 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 yet uh, held her own. So I looked up to Goldie Hawn, and uh, I still do. She's still someone I admire greatly. Have you ever talked with her? I've never met her, no. I've been in class with her, in exercise class with her, and I've stared at her, but I've never met her because sometimes it's best not to meet someone you admire because it you know, brings it down to sort of realistic terms. And Would you be able to tell her that you're a fan or that you've looked up to her? I think one day that we will have the opportunity to exchange that. I tend to now, I must say, I admire a lot of my peers that are my age, like Mayor Winningham an actress I admire, Rebecca de Mornay. Kathleen Turner. There are a lot of people I really love, um, so I've been fortunate to be in a business where you can appreciate each other more. And I bet that the, that they look at you and and admire you a lot too, as well they might. I hope so. The the role you have is uh, not one of the major roles, uh, and of course now you're into a starring category. Uh, how did you happen to be considered for this role? Well, I had to fight for it because they didn't think I'd be good for it. They thought that I might be too much of a big person to play a small role. And they might have been right if I was like that, but I'm not like that. I, I, I kind of have a, I just wanted to do it. I just wanted to be associated with it. I would have served the coffee, served the food, anything to be on this movie. Because I knew it was going to be good, and I feel, I feel that it's an important um, step towards filmmaking, towards blacks in film. And working with Steven would have been a dream realized, which it was. And so. That was my motivation. So you just went for it. I went for it, and I got the role. Great, mm -hmm. great. Um, it, we've talked about this before, Radon. Uh, your mixed racial heritage, and your character is is that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm wondering, of course, uh, she identifies mostly, I guess, as a black, doesn't? Does well, you know, you're from the South. You know how it is. If, well, isn't there some story about some woman in the South where she was like a member of the KKK, but she found out on a social register that she was an eighth black or a sixteenth black, and she freaked out, you know, because you're considered, if you have a little bit of something in you, you're considered that, that race, especially in the South. So, I mean, certainly if you're half anything, especially black, you're going to be black. I mean, you know, Thomas Jefferson had black kids, and they were considered black, even though they were someone as great as his kids, you know. It's a sort of an unfortunate distinction, but uh, nonetheless, it is real. Mm -hmm. But in other places you go, is it less real for you? Well, I mean, I'd like to think that, you know, I just, but I'd hate to be naive to think that the world, you know, doesn't look at the color that I am. I just know that one day, you know, the planet may not, you know, take that stance and have to sort of differentiate between each other. I know that there's different levels of it and it does exist. But um, in the industry, I'm considered a little bit different than, say, an actress like Whoopi, because I have a broader um, physical appearance, so you, I can play different, more 
a wider range of things, you know. I mean, she may differ with me, and she may probably smack me in the mouth for saying this, but, you know, there are things that I can play that I don't know that she could maybe play, you know. And yet, I could never play a role that someone like, um, no, this is ridiculous, but someone like, say, Meryl Streep, but obviously I couldn't, but you know what I'm saying? Or, say, Ali Sheedy. There are people who will not consider me for a movie because they want someone like Ali Sheedy. And, you know, there you are, but there are parts that I could get she couldn't get. So, it has its benefits, and it's, you know, I just hope globally that we just stop looking at our skin uh, color um, because I've met some beautiful people and they don't often uh, come from beautiful places or look beautiful. Well, if it can just be taken in the context of it, like myself, I can say I'm French Irish. Mm -hmm. And who the heck cares? Well, you know, you <laughs> asked me a question once about the interracial question in Choose Me because I was with a man who was white and stuff. and. Um, and I remember thinking it was the only you were the only person who ever asked that, so it really stuck in my head. And I was thinking, God, I'm in Dallas. That's true. And my son is blonde <laughs> and white, but he came out of my body. And the only way I think he you could never call him black. But I know that legally, especially in the South, if he had been born in the South and in the times of slavery, especially, he would be considered black, even though he's got shocking blonde hair. Now um, I think it's just proof of how absurd it is to be a prejudice of any kind. So. Let's just hope that in our lifetime we see a, a trend towards it being out of vogue to be so prejudiced. And also it's economical, but we could wrap on this for a long time. I think, Radon, people speaking as frankly and openly as you do is the thing that can bring that about. And so I just think you're, you're a real special lady to, to speak out like that. We, I, I always enjoy my visits with you. They're always just too darn short. So come back to Dallas real soon, Thank will you? you? I will. Thank okay, you lovely fun. to see you. Oh Thank you and congratulations on a really wonderful performance. Thank you. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Pause tape. Okay, you got speed. speed. Your character dreams of being like the character called Suge. And I'm wondering, in your own life, has there ever been anybody you've looked at and thought, oh, if I could only grow up to be like... Would you ever be able to tell her that should you meet her in person? You're playing a character who has a mixed racial identity, and we've talked about this before, uh, about uh, you know which part of one's racial identity she identifies with most. All right. Uh, okay, let's just do some reactions now. <laughs> okay, thank you all very much.